there. Welcome to the Field of Streams, where I, your host, Janine McRae, bring you the tiny thoughts that stream from my brain and present them to you as though they're that holy grail first pressing you've had want listed in your Discogs account for five years. And yes, it does have the OG rare poster it came with, but more than that, it's graded VG++ and it's just so obviously an NM. No warps, no crackles, no ring marks, no hosed. Mmm, near mint. Now, I can't promise you much with these jingles, but I can promise you this. I won't keep you long. A promise like that deserves a follow, don't you think? Tap that follow button. Every time you do, a writer feels better about their work and themselves. Today's episode... I was inspired to write this one after reading the story of a guy finding a shrimp tail, or prawn tail if you're Australian, in a box of cinnamon crunch cereal back in 2021. That's it. That's the setup. Ha! Psych! That's not all the setup, but since this one's actually probably the longest one I've done so far, I'll keep this intro a bit briefer than normal. This episode marries the idea of shrimp tails in cereals being like a special ingredient with one of my pet peeves, aka brainstorms in creative agencies to come up with names or taglines for products. Not to brag, but I've been in a lot of brainstorms in my time and I'm not going to get into why I hate them, but I will say this. Some people don't have a brain that activates at the snap of a whiteboard marker lid, nor do they enjoy performative posturing. Would you call that a hot take? I wrote this post from the POV of the person running the brainstorm, and the team is trying to find a tagline for a product I called Ethereal Cereal, which is just the code name for art, the thing that makes art special. Ethereal Cereal. It's a metaphor. Basic premise? Hmm, probably the question... What secret ingredient makes your cereal different from all other creative cereals? And without any further swimming about in the milk, here is today's episode, Small Minds Brainstorming Shrimpy Ideas. If you could just close the door behind you, Janet. Thanks. Okay, okay. Settle down. Welcome, gang. So happy you came to this little sesh of ours, this little storm of the brain. I know it's your lunch break, so I mean it. Thanks for coming in. Team players, am I right? It really is what makes us a family here at Kicking and Scheming Incorporated. So please take a seat wherever. Make yourself comfortable. Yes, the comically oversized hamburger bean bag is always a fun choice, Anton. Nice one. Don't we have a riot here? Just make sure you're facing the whiteboard. I'd hate for you to miss any of the great ideas. Don't be shy. Go on, grab a boxed lunch. Oh, and if you're not vegan, please don't take a vegan one. Guys, come on. They're for the vegans only. You'd be surprised how expensive hummus is. I certainly had no idea. Janet, did you know? Of course you did. You phoned in the order. There's coffee and some Le Croix, just as good as the real stuff, I reckon. A bit of a briny aftertaste, but that client keeps our lights on, so feel free to take a few slabs home. Seriously, Janet, I can't get into the crying room. There's a goddamn phalanx of that shit in there. Make a note to do something about that. This is going to be great. Look in front of you. I've given you all a coloured marker and some sticky notes. Aren't they fun? I'm so excited you're here, all you young people. I say it all the time. You're the future of this agency. The world. Gosh, who am I kidding? The goddamn universe. So young. So young and relevant. That's what I said to the other guys earlier before I kicked them all out. Interns have the best ideas. Just generate the best ideas. You guys are rubbish. Totally irrelevant, I said to them. I'm bringing the interns in. And then I fired them all. <laughs> Man, they laughed so hard at that. I kid. I kid, of course. They're just on a pip. Anyway, I, I digress. This is just a little informal brainstorm, guys. There are no bad ideas here. I mean it, none. Except if they are bad, of course. <laughs> a kid, a kid, no bad ideas. Just the best ideas. I have the whiteboard marker, and we'll be writing all your idea nuggets up here. And then at the end, we'll all take some little coloured dots and put them next to the ideas we like. The ones with the most dots win. It's a democracy of ideas. I mean, you don't have dots. We only had one roll and I have that. But Janet, perhaps later you could go out and get some if we have time. Only if we have time. <laughs> we'll see if we can dig some others up. But 
it. Here am I rambling on. Let's just get started. I can't wait. This is going to be great. Let's get our brains firing. Hustle the idea muscle, so to speak. Oh, that's good, Janet. Write that down in my random slogans for Etsy T's notebook, will you? First, a little background, just to wet your whistles. That means your lips. That's what we used to say back in my day. You whistle with your lips. Do you guys ever whistle? Is there an app for that? Doesn't matter. Moving on. Janet, can you close the blinds and dim the lights? Thank you. Okay. Shh, everyone. Close your eyes. Listen to the sound of my voice in this dark and fertile idea cove. This is a safe space. Breathe and listen carefully as I describe the product, the very essence of its being, the give the people what they want of it. Close your eyes and as I speak, imagine the personality of this brand, the who, the what, the why of it. Then let the director of the theatre of your mind put the players upon your stage. Let them act out the dream of this product. Let them speak through you to the audience of us in this darkened auditorium, this executive conference room on the seventh floor. Let the players perform until they project their voices to the very core of this dry erase pen and reveal to us... Michelle, are you checking your Instagram right now? I can see the light. Guys, airplane mode, please. I was really on a roll there. Where was I? Okay, eyes closed again. Everyone, shh. Picture this. You're seated at a table set for breakfast. The linen tablecloth is rough between your fingertips and exudes the faint odour of fabric softener. This is not important. I don't know why I brought that up. Ignore the tablecloth. There is a spoon next to your right hand. One spoon. Think of this spoon as a cultural ladle. It is the art-eating spoon. With it, you will shovel heaping spoonfuls of creative ephemera into that gaping, culture-seeking maw of yours. You are always so hungry for it, so hungry. Pick up the spoon. Anticipation. It crawls all over your skin like toddlers on a jungle gym, and you can hardly take it, for you know what's coming. You know that you are about to consume and devour and absorb the meaning, the beauty, and the soul of something truly great. Are you ready? For the art is the work, and the work of all artists is the food for this table. Culture sustains us. Here comes the server. Before you, the artist sets down a bowl filled to the brim with, um, cereal. But not just any cereal. It's art cereal. It looks like the picture on the box, following all the rules and conventions of content and presentation. The sweet fragrance of sugary milk mixed with a slight tang of fruit invades your nostrils. Pebbles float. A plump, random raisin gloms onto a gravelly shard of granola. Whatever you dream this cereal to be, it is exactly that. You have seen this bowl presented to you on a thousand tables in your lifetime, and it always tastes... fine. It is mass-produced and endlessly edible. It is a consumable of extraordinary excellence. Everybody eats it. But wait! This one seems different. You take a spoonful to your mouth, chew and swallow. Your brain explodes. This one is different. This is imbued with a special ingredient that makes this art cereal bowl different from all the other art cereal bowls. It speaks not just to your hunger for cultural enrichment, but to your heart's desire for beauty, for intellect, for the challenge. It has an aura of something you can't quite put your finger on. It drifts through your mind halls and out into the stratosphere of your desire. It is warm. It is nutritious. It is calorie dense. It is quite unlike all the other cereals in all the other diners you've been to. The galleries, the shows, the readings. Each spoonful is like an awakening, a delicious fright of unexpected ecstasy. This is what art should be. This is what life needs. This is the true taste of ethereal cereal. Lights, Janet. Okay, Brainiac's eyes open. What's the tagline? You in the corner. Go! What? 
Of course you can ask a question. This is not a dictatorship. <laughs> well, I believe the client intends to capture the essence of what makes an artist or famous writer or film phenom, you know, them. Work out the tick of their special clock, etc. And once they've captured that and synthesized it in a lab, they're going to use marketing boffins like us to hock it to the masses, package it up with a fun cartoon mascot and a 360 campaign that'll get noticed. A you too can be Banksy kind of deal. Serial is sort of a metaphor, I guess. We're kind of winging it here until they figure out what it is exactly. Come on, focus. Reality is for real worlders. This is Madison Avenue. Well, Madison Avenue adjacent, anyway. Close enough. Nothing? Really? <sighs> Look, it took me a while to get it to, but this is the kernel of it. The thing. What's the thing? Like, okay, an example. Paul McCartney. He's written a lot of songs and seems to have done all right by it. But where did those songs come from? How did he pluck them out of the air, use the same words and notes that everyone else has access to, and make them more successful than other folks' little ditties? What is his dealio? What makes his woos and yes so special? A lot of people write a lot of songs, but there's only one Paul McCartney with the hits and such. There must be a secret ingredient pantry that only he has access to, right? Something that allows him to make those extra special and tasty bowls of cereal that everyone wants to eat. So that's the product here. The yet unnamed and untaglined, unless we get our shit together, contents of this ethereal cereal box. No, he was in The Beatles. Like NSYNC, but scruffier. Oh, um, NSYNC is like... Shit, I don't know. Janet, help me. Forget it. Bad example. We're getting off track here. Let's just start throwing ideas at the wall and see what sticks. Taglines. Go! I'll get the ball rolling. I used to be really hot shit at this back in the day, you know. Mmm. Ethereal cereal. It's extra celestial. Trademark. See what I did there? We could do a whole campaign with a boy flying through the air on his bicycle in front of a moon with a big E dot C dot the extra celestial. And maybe a spoof on EC phone home and get Spielberg to do it and everything. What? He doesn't do commercials? Are you sure, Janet? I mean, fine, his loss. We probably couldn't get that through legal anyways. But guys, I'm just spitballing. Just demonstrating that there are no bad ideas. Look, I'm writing it down. The whiteboard is no longer empty. Yes, finally, Mark. You don't have to put your hand up. Just say it. Again, as I said before, it's not an actual physical product. Not tangible. Not yet. It's still in the early stages of development, but they've captured some really big name celebrities, just top draw wonderkin types, who are participating in the initial extraction process and experiments. I'm sure it's all above board and follows FDA or FCC or KFC secret spice guidelines or whatever this would fall under. This ain't no shonk show, guys. This is rarefied air here. All above board. Preemptively working on a product that no one's been able to capture the essence of and push it out on a grand scale. This is big world changing stuff. And here we are on the ground floor. Oh, for f what's the problem here? I can't explain this any more simply. The cereal is the art, which is the product, the product of the artiste. We, Janet, me, all you knuckleheads, the public, we eat the cereal. The ethereal part of the cereal is what we're advertising here. It's the secret ingredient, the talent, the spark, the ghost in the madness that makes it different from all the other bowls out there. And we're going to nail this or you're all fired. JK, but not really. Yes, Ian. Ethereal cereal. What's in your goblet, TM? <sighs> A little reductive, but okay, I'll write that down. Most people don't eat cereal out of goblets. But I did say no bad ideas. Uh, Janet, make a note. This idea is bad. Ethereal cereal. Whatever it is, it's in here. Trust us. Trademark. Thanks, Kevin. Good effort, I guess. Thanks for playing. No, I'm not writing it on the board. Guys, for the love of Brian Dennehy, let's focus. Let's channel our special ingredients together. No, that's not code for anything. What? Why would we need to get HR involved? Look, what I'm saying is that 
I'm sure between all the smart young Tic Tacs in this room and my gold lion almost nominated brain, here we can come up with something that'll really impress and impregnate the cultural pantheon with spectral impregnation. Inflame the imaginations of the sheeple who bleat incessantly about their potential to be influencers on a grand scale. So focus. What's the special thing in the thing that makes it an extra special thing that people go nuts over? What's the thing that makes it go viral? Our story needs conflict or else it's dead in the bowl of milk, guys. Sour, soggy, limp and dull, loved only by ants and weevils. Well, judging by the distinct lack of ideas in this thought vacuum, we seem to be at an impasse here. This is very disappointing. Perhaps I underestimated your future-saving ways. Sorry? What was that? You there, up the back. You said something? Speak up. This is it, Janet. I can feel it. No bad ideas. Except yours, Kevin. Yours was pretty bad. Yes? The thing. You got it. You think the thing is different for everyone. You think this thing cannot be named. You think that by its very ethereal nature, it is undefinable and uncategorizable. Its ingredients can never be quantified or identified, solidified or commercialized, or even the shape of it drawn in a dream, let alone on a whiteboard. Its essence cannot be captured or extracted or touched or held in a bowl, and that milk, cow, oat, nut or otherwise ain't going to bring it out. You think that the thing that brings the dish its unique flavour is highly perishable, susceptible to criticism, and that it can easily go rancid when exposed to the harsh taxonomy of identification. That it can't be boxed, commodified, or sold to anyone who seeks the slippery oil of talent or the soothing lotion of genius. It has no name, cannot be trademarked, patented, or given a logo that scores highly in recognition polls, It exists within your spectral being, or simply does not exist. The end. There's no amount of sugar you can eat or cultural calories you can consume to trigger the thing that makes your one thing special or different. I'm sorry, hold up. Janet, are you getting all this? Can you read that last bit back to me? All boxes of cinnamon toast crunch look the same. We are not God. We can't predict which one contains the special shrimp tails. We can only keep filling our bowls. Well, thanks, Goodwill Hunting. You've solved it with your mop and coveralls, and don't we all look like fools? But I can't help notice that nowhere in your grandiose, pointless TED Talk of a speech did you suggest a tagline that will win us this business. But let me just see if I've got this straight. Let me just interpret your waffle, distill your manifesto, read between the lines and write it here on the whiteboard in big block letters so the whole room can see ethereal serial who the f*** knows trademark. Get out, you're all dismissed. Janet, clear my schedule and bring me my wooby. If anyone's looking for me, I'll be wrapped up in the comically large hamburger bean bag, groaning between the lettuce and tomato layers. And there you have it. Today's episode. I wish I had some voice actors to help me record these things, but I'm doing what I can. The link to the story about the shrimp tail and the cinnamon crunch cereal is in the description, but um, I think that about wraps it up. Have fun in your brainstorms, if that's at all possible, and I hope you come back to devour more of these episodes in the future. These little missives are designed to inspire creative folk to get out there and make something of their own. If you enjoyed this episode, please follow the podcast so that you never miss one. Sign up to read my writing at janinemccrae.substack.com, and for now, I'll leave you with this. Love what you love, and I'll see you out there making stuff.